I'm still getting tons of questions about this crab prep, so I thought let me do the prep, but this time with a commentary. Yeah, we've got the concretion as I found it on the beach. I'll pause it and you'll be able to see the three leg rings on the left there. I'm going to skip past the boring parts where I just remove rock. The first thing I always try and do is find the top of the, the crab, the carapace, and you'll see it's just starting to show there that little bit of uh, slightly more brown rock. That's the top of the crab shell. So at least now I know at what depth it is and I can start now trying to find uh, which way it's facing where the claws going to be and where the legs going to be which is what I'm doing now Just slowly revealing more of it and um, I'm moving between two different air scribes one for bulk rock removal and one for delicate delicate work I'm wearing a respirator while I work on this crab because you don't want to breathe in the dust from these rocks they can have silica in them I'm also wearing a vibration reducing glove on my right hand there just to protect the nerves in my hand from all the vibrations. Every now and again you'll see me paint on some liquid. This is Paraloid B72 which is basically plastic that's in acetone. So the acetone will evaporate leaving behind that plastic layer and that's to protect the crab shell from the air scribe's vibrations. You don't want the crab shell to start flaking off the bits that you've exposed. Usually the bits that are still in the rock is fine because you know the rock's keeping it together. This is an extinct species of crab. It's called a Tumorocarcinus giganteus. And you can see why they're called giganteus. <laughs> they're pretty big crabs. Over here I find the shoulder of the, the crab, the shoulder of the big uh, arm. These crabs are usually right-handed, so the right-hand claw is a lot bigger than the left-hand claw, I think in the males. But that's a clue to me that this is the way that this crab is facing, because I know that's the right-hand claw, because it's a lot bigger than uh, the left-hand one. As I'm working away at this right-hand claw, a big crack appears. So I take my chisel and I gently, very gently, just tap away at it because I could see down the side of that crack that is actually not attached to the claw. So I knew I had a really good chance of removing a whole bunch of rock with that chisel without damaging the claw. This fossil crab is roughly 12 million years old and that's based on an estimate of the geological formation it was found in. Over here I find the left hand claw, uh, the shoulder part of it, not sure if that's the technical term, and I work my way down towards uh, the darker area, uh, which is the front of that, that claw there. It looks like I jump between the claws and the, the crab body, but what I'm actually doing is I'm taking all the rock down to the same level, just so I know where everything is. I back onto the right hand claw now and as I keep exposing more of it you can see it's curving in all the way basically to the where the face of the crab would be it's almost like you know it's covering its eyes a few people have asked if this is the color the crab was when it was alive and I actually don't know I'd love to know as well what color this was uh, when it was alive but it's crazy how the front of the claws are that black color and I've seen that in uh, crabs that are alive today where the, the claws are that black, uh, shiny black color and the rest of the crab is either red or orange, very similar to this one. These crabs used to live in deep water, so mid-shelf, uh, roughly 300 meters, a thousand feet and deeper. Over here I start finding one of the, the crab legs and the, the crab legs are tricky because they can sometimes be hollow uh, which are a real pain to prep them because your air scribe just pops straight through them. If I do find a hollow leg I have to fill it up with some uh, super glue, uh, really thick super glue and then wait for it to dry and then carry on prepping it and hope that you know I don't find another hollow piece. It can take ages. These legs are in pretty good shape you can see I uh, speed through the legs. The legs can also be quite sticky sometimes. Sticky is when the rock doesn't want to flake away from the, the fossil and you kind of have to scrape it away or use air abrasion or acid. Crabs don't really do well with acid treatment so I keep the acid which is just vinegar 
for the, the bones because they seem to uh, not be affected very much by the acid at all. This footage is sped up uh, at least a hundred times so while it looks like I'm working quite quickly I'm actually very very <laughs> slow when I work on this crab. It's very methodical, it's very delicate work. This leg I'm working on now was real crumbly. It was just trying to flake away on me. So I was adding so much B72 onto it just to keep it in one piece. You sometimes get that, especially on the edges of the concretion, that the, the fossil's really soft and the air from the air scribe just wants to blow it away. And there's the fourth leg on the left hand side. So I've got all four legs on both sides. Ideally you want the tips of the legs uh, intact as you can see here, all four legs have been eroded where they were outside the concretion and you often find that in the crabs from this area. Uh, the tips of the legs are eroded. Sometimes you're lucky and you find one or two tips um, where they've been back inside the concretion. You could remove all the rock from the crab but it would make it really delicate. It would take ages and you wouldn't be able to handle it. It would fall apart. In one of my other preps I tried to remove way more rock than I did here and one of the legs actually fell off. I'm almost done now and you can see that it's starting to look quite shiny as I'm adding more layers of B72 onto it. The B72 can be reversed uh, by just removing it with acetone. The final step is always landscaping the rock so trying to remove as many of the air scribe marks as you can. Uh, I just normally use the air scribe, but you can also use a Dremel or something else just to sand down the, uh, the rock of the concretion to make it look more uniform. That's 200 hours. And here's the result of 200 hours of work. I've made this crab into a 3D model, so I go download it for free on Sketchfab and print your own. And thanks so much for watching this with me. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all in the next hunt.